Hey guys, and how's it going? It's something a little different today. This is a Ninja uh, pressure cooker, air fryer, kind of like a five in one or six in one uh, cooker of sorts, about a month old. Unfortunately, it uh, had a failure. And what that failure is, I'll go plug it in right now. I'll give you a little show and tell. You fire it up, and even with a pot on the inside of it, it'll start to tell you that it does not see the pot internally. Open there for a second. You see that we got one. So it's got a little sensor or plunger in the center. I'll show you in a minute. You put a pot in the middle of it. You shut it. You go to turn it on. It says add pot. It is, does not sense that there's a pot in the center of it. The backstory on this, what happened was it was being used. It was full. Went to go dump some of it out into something else to add some more fluid. The liquid ran down the side of it. Some of it went into the center of it and took something out. So I figured it'd be a good little something to take apart, either figure out what caused it, what broke, or see if possibly we can even fix it. Let's get set up and we'll get into it. All right, so it's got two different attachments to go with. I only have the one pot right now, and there's another attachment that goes in and kind of locks into place more for the pressure cooker part of things. I don't have that here with me, but we can uh, continue on again. It's not sensing what it's supposed to be. There's a little tab in the center, a little button in the center. That seems to be what the sensor is that looks for um, the pot being there. Again, fluid got down inside there. We'll find out what kind of caused that by digging into it. Hopefully we can fix it, but we'll see. If not, we're just going to tear it apart. See a couple screws there. That looks like it's just for the hinge, possibly. I don't see anything else. Let's go take a peek on the bottom side. And it looks like this cover will come off. See one screw here, and it looks like it's no just notched in. Like if we take that screw out, we can rotate it and get it out. That one right there. Let's get that out. I'm curious to see what's inside it anyway. It's got one of those safety bits with a little, little hole in the center. And you can give it a rotate. Here's some stuff. <laughs> I see, looks like two switches here. There's that switch that's up top. We should probably put a meter on these two. We'll go across and we'll see if we push up down on that, see if it makes an on off circuit. Let's have a meter. The battery's a little low. I don't know if it shows up. Cran these two probes out. Makes it so that's a, uh, a dead short, essentially. Let's go tap onto those. I would think it would probably be open at first. Nope. I'm not seeing much of a change. You're saying what, 21 ohms? Yeah. And you hit it and there's no change. So I figure one way would be open, one way would be closed, but it's not happening either way. Uh, I'm gonna go take the two wires right off. We might be getting feedback from other parts of the circuit. Let's just open it up just so it's right on the sensor itself. Did you ever have one of those days? I got some new batteries in the meter. Let's see what we get. I'm going to pull up on those because they may have contacts on the other side. It is not seeing that at all. Let's go across it, make sure our meter is still working. It is. All right, so we are having an issue. Here it goes. I 
Wouldn't exactly say it's repeating though. Let's see if you can get into that. Pull that out of there. That one's putting up a fight. Let's see if we can get underneath it. Probably has Loctite or some kind of. Looks like we have one, two, three. I'm not sure what else. These are so this bracket, I don't know if you can see it, is holding this plate down. I wonder if we could just get it so that we can loosen up and pull that upper section right out of there. I'm sure there's coils on the back side of here that we are not seeing. Let's go and see if we can get this lid just out of our out of our way. Take these two screws out. See if we get any play out of here. I think it's gonna have to come out no matter what anyway. See, it looks like little caps. I wonder if there's screws behind these. I don't see anything. I don't feel anything back there. Another one here. So it would have to be access for something, right? There's another one in the front here too. Yeah, do a little exploratory looking with a light. Possibly there's something. And does that do anything for this hardware? No. You want to try taking these four out? Anything. These look like they go up to a coil. I just don't know how many layers there are to what's inside there. That looks like a temp sensor of some sort. Because both, both set of points are touching it. Let's just start taking a whole bunch of screws out and we'll shake it real good. <laughs>
Okay, I'm gonna have to mark some wires. Before I taking all those wires out, I'm gonna grab those other four. I put two screws back in to hold that tub up where it was. Maybe we could spin these. I think if we can get those four okay, I think we we'll get these four out it might separate in a different fashion I don't see that moving for us to you hoping that would come out far enough away we can access that there it goes there's one Let's get those four off. Feel it. That one came out a little different, huh? Let's go see. If that gains us access, all kinds of stuff clunking around in there. There we go. So, those two leads, if we take those two leads off, we should be able to get that off of there. And it looks like something ceramic may have broke. We got we got two leads where the orange things are, and then we got two wires going into the center that are different. Yeah, we'll call that one black. And these are all blue. Watch that rub off and I won't be able to tell what they say. Let's go over here. Yeah. <laughs> That's supposed to be a grease pad. That's supposed to be able to write on. I wonder if those two couldn't make contact just because of this right here. Oh, that just kind of lined up to where. Let's go. Keep digging. It's already broke, right? Choice is throw it out or give it one last feeble attempt.
just curious how those two red leads go down and touch. I don't know if they are, if they work off of proximity. That might just be a proximity switch that burned out. Kind of senses that there's metal there. It didn't like that, did it? The poor someone's gonna get it. See if we can get it in with a, a thinner screwdriver. burned up or destroyed on that. I have a feeling that's what they are though. I, that's probably a proximity switch. Just senses when something's above it, you know? Temp sensor too. What do you think? Temp sensor or proximity switch? I'm going to say that that's a temp sensor. And the thing that we were playing with before is what senses whether there's a pot or not. And I, I have a feeling maybe the crap that was around the outside of that. We'll start reassembling it and we'll see with those two contacts the very first ones I took off. Let's go see what they line up. I would think that's probably going to be here in the center disc that it picks up on it and looks for uh, contact across that. But there was some crap sitting around here. Possibly that was was breaking the signal. Don't know. So I put the two tabs back in the center. Porcelain's broken away a little bit from one of them. But it looks like I would have thought it either would have jumped from here to here or from here to the center, but it doesn't. I think it just goes from these two points and that is spring loaded. And I'm not sure for how far elevated, again, this whole thing is on a spring too. So the, the top of this button is floating and then it has another set down below. So when you contact, but I have a feeling maybe again, I think it was soup that was being made. It looks like it just got on the contacts and you can see where it's got enough buildup on it where it just wouldn't make contact across those two. So I'm going to try cleaning that up, cleaning them up. That sits spring loaded back in this holster and I'll probably stack that material on these standoffs. It's got like a bunch of isolators or insulators. There's two more over there. Let's see if I can get all those probably on these one of them threaded out the one that had the ground wires on it and uh, see if I can get all that put back into place we'll, pa we'll power it up and see what happens poof <laughs> this is gonna happen get some electrical contact clean let's see if that'll be enough to break that stuff up I think it's not exactly cheap so I think it's 170 bucks I'd like to try to give it a getting chance. I don't think that's going to be heavy enough. Yeah, it didn't do anything. I have to go for like thinner or acetone or something and wipe that off. Strong soup. <laughs> it's been the good stuff. Yeah, it's really on there. A good old WD. Seems to be doing better than the other stuff did anyway. Not that set up. 
let that sit on there for a little bit. Yeah, I can see some even over here. I think I found the trick. How about some Scotch Brite and WD? Yeah, that'll do her. Some little bit of authority behind it. Not sure if anything contacts that outer ring, but while we're here, right? Nothing like putting it all together and then saying to yourself, but well, what if I clean that? What if it had worked? Yeah. So I'm going to finish cleaning that up and get my hands in front of me. Set it off to the side and get that back on there. Clean those two points too on there. Yeah, so that's it. It's back together and just kind of comes down and touches those two pins. And then any over travel, it just has a spring on it to stop that from happening you know to give it some some flex my right? best way to say it and I would say definitely that would uh, cause a uh, high resistance and not detecting the pot being in there uh, we could probably when we go to put this back on we could probe it again with the meter I would figure we should go right to zero ohms uh, going across it so if it's 200 ohms when it's open and zero when we close then we know it's working where before it seemed like it kind of stayed the same. So we need to find out. Two of them stayed there. We could leave them be. And I got to get the one leg that pulled out. Because there's a, there's like a washer that needs to go on. On this side of it. Worst case, I'll, I'll tack it on with something if I have to. But I'll see if I can get the stud uh, out of where it is and, and installed on here. Yeah, that guy looks like it has the Allen wrench head in the center of it. I should just grab it with a pair of vice grips and we'll, I can undo that and put that one in. Actually, it's just the one washer that goes down below it. There we go. Now I can Probably, I'll just leave these two are already stuck here, so I'll leave them be. I'll just put the other two, I'll clean them up and put them on there. So that's going to go like that. So I need that one and that one. Drew over the other side. Let's get the wire colors just kind of line up. All the yellows went together, all the blues went together. These are all grounds. Or at least they are now. <laughs> so those three got tied together. And then we get three. You read it? All right, black is here. Good. <laughs> that one of them showed up. Probably doesn't matter which way it goes, but. And then the three blues get tied on the other one. And we've got the two pressure switches. These, uh, I'm going to say they're probably temp sensors also, I'm, I'm guessing. all those wires back into those little looms I think they kind of went up in these things so those wires all 
take a moment to zigzag all them into place. I don't remember if they were. I know these were over here. And we still have to again swing. These two switches have to get swung over. That one. And that one. I wonder if that area should get clean too. I'm not sure what they are. They read, they say something on them. I can't read it though. I would figure this would have a bunch of stuff on it for over temp, would be my guess. You don't want it to run away, you know? And I think it would have like redundancy, a fail safe or something. Maybe that's why there's two switches. I don't know. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you can flip it over and shake that out of there, hopefully. I found it. Let's go get these back in, too. So we got that one, that one, and we got two little ones here, don't we? Yeah. Put those two in. We'll flip it over. I'll leave that bottom panel off for now. Leave this, we'll leave this cover off for a minute. They almost dumped another screw in there. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. All right. I'll bring you back as soon as we flip it over and plug it in. The top three thing I have is these two that I thought were for the handle. And those three rubber plugs. And I think I put those three rubber plugs are just kind of like isolators to keep the when you put the pot in there probably keeps it from vibrating little bumpers that's all i think these are like to stick that little isolators or insulators or so that's not metal on metal every time you're putting a pot in there i could fix the next one in 10 minutes now that i know how it goes together so the next time she does this, <laughs> maybe. So what you really need to do is just take a couple of wires off and those four large ones are the ones that hold it. That's it, you can drop the whole thing. I think we're good to go. Let's go and drop a pot in there. Let's, uh, I'll move you back a little further. We'll turn it to the screen is in the front. We'll plug it in. All right, let's see what we get. Smoke. <laughs> what do you think? Just hit start. Hey, hey. <laughs> I don't know how to work the rest of it. Let's give it, I don't know, time. What are we supposed to do? Function. Other lid, I think is what it says. So. Yeah, so what makes it so we work it on this one? I don't know. I will keep warm. I don't know how to work it. OTHR. Uh, you don't want. Yeah, what would you do just for. There we go. I think it's got it. I don't have the, again, I don't have the other, the one that locks in and so you can uh, do the pressurizing. But we got that display that it recognizes the thing now. Now what do we gotta do? What do you think, just hit start? <laughs> I can fix it, I can't use it. All right, it's humming. It's making noise.
I think what that is is that like a set of coils up on top that heats up and you have like a basket that goes down inside of it. I wonder if you open it, if it shuts right off. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a fan that's up in it too. Cool. I just saved myself $169.69 in brownie points. <laughs> Gotta brag. <laughs> and we'll send that one up. And we'll make a little message. Who's your daddy? <laughs> And we'll send that up. <laughs> Alright guys, so I'm going to call that a win. I think we got it. Seems like it's doing everything it should. And uh, that just saved me a few bucks. I'm glad for that. I want to thank you all for kind of hanging out in the garage with me and uh, do a wrenching on some uh, kitchen appliances for once. Something a little different. Saved myself a couple of bucks on this one. And, uh, you know, maybe somebody else has the same issue looking it up. They can uh, be able to... Uh, dig in a little bit. Who says it's uh, no use serviceable parts in it? Just needs a little bit of cleaning on the contacts. Uh, back it comes. All right, guys. Thanks. I'll see you. Bye. And that's the responses I got. <laughs> no, that's not her. <laughs> Need to lift the pot out of it. Yeah, it recognizes that it's not there. And it is. One last look. I think we're good. I don't see any. That looks like it should be. I don't see any wires that can reach. Bend that down a little, maybe. We need to go right there. Oh, I need that funky. Funky driver, wherever that ended up. I do know. I do know. I do know. Ha <laughs> ha!